Hey everyone, I'm going to take a look at the new nominee contract packs on eFootball as well as the two new match pass players. There are a bunch more review videos that I'm going to be doing over the next few days. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a poll up in the community tab. So if you click on the community tab and drop a vote on there, I'll list the, the review videos that I'm planning to do and that will help to let me know which one you want to see next. So drop a vote on there if you can and then I'll be, like I say, I'll be doing more pack review videos over the next few days on the channel. For this video, as always, there'll be timestamps in the description for each player. So if there's a particular player you want to hear about, click on the description and there'll be a link to take you straight to them. The way I'm going to do it this time, rather than reviewing it pack by pack, I'm going to review the three stars first from all the packs, then all the four stars and then all the five stars. And I'll give you my recommendations along the way for each star level as well. So starting with the Brazilian League pack, just one three star in there. And it is Kawa Elias. Probably said that terribly. So, <clears throat> no face scan. Not a big surprise. A lot of players in the Brazilian League that have placed face scans. There are a lot of players in the Brazilian League who aren't even in the game. The whole licensing situation in Brazil is pathetic. Konami, cough, cough. Please sort it out. Um, yeah, so we're looking at the three-star. As always with these three-star cards, you can't expect too much. Um, this guy's main strength is obvious. Finishing 88. So you're going to get 90-plus finishing with your game plan boost. On a three-star card, that's great. Outside of that, the attack... attack <clears throat> excuse me the attacking awareness is not brilliant but again it's a three star card i don't think it's too bad for a three star card mid 80s i'd say is fine on a three star he's not great on the ball you'd have to be careful on the ball with him like i was likewise with his passing don't ask too much with his passing pace on a goal poacher i always say it. i don't need to quick enough for a goal poacher that could be a bit frustrating for some people if you don't mind that then i could be fine kicking balls decent enough aerial and physical is interesting this he's about five foot ten five eleven so he's not tall he's fairly average height jumping 72 is not brilliant Physical, 70, <clears throat> physical 75 is okay. Not great balance. Stamina is poor. But as I mentioned with the, with the jumping and the physical, 5'10", 5'11", he has aerial superiority. So is that going to make him great in the air? I think when some people see that skill, they're going to think, oh, great, this guy's going to be good in the air. But I'm not sure he will. He doesn't have heading. He doesn't have acrobatic finishing. Yes, the heading's at 80, but with the jumping only 72, he's about 5'10", 5'11". I don't think he's going to be great in the air. In terms of his other skills, first time shot, great, most important one on the striker. Long range curler, that's a good one to have as well. One touch pass, likewise. Outside curler's handy. So he's got a few decent skills there. He's kind of an all rounder. He's just not that great. I don't think he's going to feel comfortable on the ball. The balance isn't great. The technicals aren't great. It's not great at, <clears throat> not great at passing. Choking on the biscuit here. <laughs> um, and the pace isn't brilliant for a goal poacher. So, yeah, it's a three star card, but I think even for a three star card, I don't think it's brilliant. Uh, I think if we really want a strike option for the Brazilian League Challenge, assuming they ever give us that again, which I wish they would, um, I don't think it'd be too bad for you. I think the main strength, like I say, is the finishing. Uh, if you're confident enough, this guy's going to get into good enough positions. You'll be able to feed him with opportunities. He'll certainly be able to take chances for you. So he's got some strengths and some with the skills he's got and without finishing, he can. There's no question he could take chances. He's just a bit weak in other areas. So for some people, it could be a useful one. Could get you some goals in the Brazilian League Challenge. But beyond that, yeah, he's very much a three-star card. He's not the best. And in the Turkish League pack, we have Jakub Kalajinski. So, again, a three-star inconsistent form is not great. Um, quite two-footed, no face gun. They've been face scanning a lot of players in the Turkish League. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a face gun. He's quite young. He might be a prospect in real life. Um, we've got a creative playmaker. He can only play one position. That's attacking midfield. And he's... He's not too bad, to be fair. I mean, on the ball, he's reasonably tidy. He's clearly not a dribbler. Dribbling only 80. That's not bad, but it's not great. Uh, and he's not the quickest either. And that balance is horrible at 66. Um, passing, though, 87 low pass. With your game plan boost, with an 88-rated 88 manager, you're going to get 90 on low pass on a three-star card. That's great. If we look at his skills, he has one touch pass and three passing as well. So this guy can create chances for you. That's great. On a creative playmaker, attacking midfield, 90 low pass with the game plan boost, one touch pass and three passing. This guy clearly has some good qualities. Super sub as well, could be handy bringing him on second half, try and open up the opposition defense, make chances. First time shot, long range shooting, dipping shot, long range curler, finishing 77. So he's got a reasonable finishing on him, especially for a three star. And soul control as well is a nice one. So yeah, this guy's got some qualities. I think the main thing to, to, to kind of... Uh, Take note of here is he's not a dribbler. He's not someone you're going to want to get on the ball and start trying to dribble your way around defenders. But if you if you just want to attack midfielder to get him on the ball, 
to be able to control the ball, be sound enough in possession and pick a pass. He does have some real qualities, so he could be a decent enough one to pick up. Of course, that bounce is terrible and he's not the quickest, but outside of that, provided you don't want a dribbler, I think he's actually a tidy card for a three-star. So again, um, as with the Brazilian league challenge, if we get the Turkish league challenge again, some three-star cards can be useful for those challenges, and I think this is one of them. So certainly some weaknesses there, but he's got some real strengths uh, with those skills as well. Uh, and I think for a three-star card as an attacking midfielder, a creative playmaker, it's a reasonably tidy card, this. And on to Japan, where we have, I think it's three three-stars. Yeah, we've got three. So we'll start with Shin Yamada. So we've had a previous Player of the Month version of Yamada, and it was also, I think, 89 rated. It's pretty similar. The awareness and finishing on that card were actually slightly better than this one. Uh, but what this one's got over that one is that he's a bit better in the air, not just with the attributes for the jumping, physical, and heading, but they've given him heading and aerial superiority. He's not the biggest, though. So, again, so you've got a strike away. You're thinking, okay, heading and aerial superiority it could be decent in the air. He's not that tall, and he's not brilliant here with the jumping. Sure, you're going to go past 80 for jumping, but don't expect him to be dominant in the air. If you give him a, a free header in the box, absolutely he might be able to take chances for you. But even with the heading score, 75 heading, I'll be mindful of that. So, I would say maybe he's decent in the air, but even that's slightly generous. Pace on the goal poacher could be worse. It's not brilliant, though. Attacking awareness, 81. Like I said, the previous version of him, better awareness and finishing. 81 attacking awareness, even on a three-star card, is not brilliant. Finishing 85 is okay. He's not brilliant on the ball again. You're going to have to be very careful on the ball with him. Passing could be worse, but it's not brilliant still. Balance is okay. Uh, yeah, again, to be honest... Much of, like I said with the uh, the Brazilian fellow, uh, what is his name, Cal Elias, whatever his name is, um, not a brilliant card. Yes, it's a three-star. You can't expect too much, but, but looking at this guy, even if we've got a, th a bunch of three-star contracts to use, I'm not sure I'd want to get this guy. I've got much better options for the J League challenge. So, uh, yeah. Some qualities there. Reasonable in the air. Reasonable finishing, but, and, you know, reasonable pace as well. But a few areas where he's reasonable and other areas where he's not so great. Doesn't sound brilliant, does it? And and he's not a brilliant card. So, yeah, he might not be a terrible one to pick up if you're, if you're new to the game, if you really need some new striker options for the Jolene Challenge, but uh, he's not the most inspiring card, to be honest. Now we have Kaito Taniguchi. So this is an interesting one. They've made him a left midfielder and a whole player. I've got a version of this guy, a five-star version for one of those Showtime Jolie packs. He's a really good striker. Um, this is obviously not as good as a three-star. Um, inter interesting that the, the dilemma with this, car this card is, do you look at this guy as a left midfielder, or do you look at him as a center forward, which he often is? It's kind of the dilemma in real life. I like him in real life. Um, and he's one of these players, who's, he's a right footer, and he can play up front, but he plays wide left a lot of the time. And I don't think I don't think even his manager is sure whether he's best through the middle or wide left. And that's what you've got to decide in-game with this card as well. So, pace there, pretty decent. Um, with the game plan boost, you're going to hit 90 for speed. Uh, kicking power is decent. Physical contact's not bad. That's hitting 80 with the game plan boost. Uh, balance, not so great, though. It's a shame. Uh, on the ball, he can dribble a bit, but... I don't know. I, I guess on a three-star card, he could be worse. But again, it depends how you look at him. As a center forward on the ball, he's okay. As a left midfielder, not brilliant. The attacking worse and finishing. Center forward, a bit iffy. Left midfield, great. So, whichever, wherever you're going to use him, through the middle or wide left, some areas he's pretty decent for a three-star. Other areas he's a bit dodgy. I think, honestly, what I'll be looking at with this guy, if you're looking at this guy and thinking about picking him up, you're looking at a, a guy who's versatile, who's a useful option. If we look at the skills he's got, He's a super sub. I think that might be something that sways it as a useful option. Stick him on the bench. You need someone up front. You need someone left wing, even just behind the attack. He could be a useful one to have in your squad. As a centre forward, he's certainly got the skills. First time shot, acrobatic finishing, heading, long range curl, long range shooting. So he can finish with his feet and his head. He could just be a decent striker if you can if you can see past the attacking when it's only being 80, which is not good. Left midfield, he doesn't really have the skills apart from long range curler, obviously cutting his hand to his right foot. But in terms of passing, in terms of crossing, there's nothing there. Uh, he does have 80 lofted pass, but without pinpoint crossing, without much curl, I don't think his crossing is going to be great. Low pass, he's clearly not been creating too many chances. For me, like I say, this is a versatile option and he could just be a useful one. Uh, for, I would 
personally probably stick him up front and just hope he can get away with the, get away with the attacking race because at 83 finishing just about passable with a good selection of shooting skills fairly decent pace i think it'd be a, a reasonable center forward without an active playing style because the whole player won't be an active playing style up front wide left i just don't think he's quite good enough on the ball but if you can't see past that, the fact that he's not great on the ball as a left midfielder with the whole player playing style active 80 attacking awareness for four year game plan boost be careful enough with him on the ball he could be pretty effective from the left left of midfield with the pace the awareness the fact he can finish cutting his eye into his right but it could be useful so like i say through the middle or wide left some some definite weaknesses there but there are some definite strengths both way both ways and especially as a super sub i think he could be a useful versatile option And for the last of our three-star cards, we have Kimoto Nono. So this, for me, is my pick of the three stars. We've got another attacking fullback. We had another attacking fullback from Kashmiran as last time. That was Anzai. I'm a fan of his. Uh, this time is a three-star. Anzai was a four-star. We've got a three-star this time. But again, it's decent value for a three-star contract. When you look at this guy as an attacking fullback, pace, decent. Stamina, probably the one area is a little bit lacking. I would like a bit more balance as well, maybe he's... Down the middle defensively i think he's fine there i think for a three-star fullback you can't really complain yeah he's not going to quite hit 80 for tackling but he is for the other three down the left you're going to have to be careful on the ball with him some people don't mind that in the fullback but for me personally i like to get towards the 80 mark on the ball certainly with ball control so he's a bit lacking on the ball be careful on the ball with him the passing i think on a three-star card you can you can forgive him 76 low pass that's not too bad 81 lofted pass that's not bad at all and his curl and his kicking power are both hitting 80 with the game plan boost and he has pinpoint crossing as well, so he's got a cross on him. Through passing as well, so going forward, through passing and pinpoint crossing, and then defensively, man marking, interception, sliding tackle. He's got a good, solid selection of skills there for an attacking fullback. Yes, there are some areas here, like on the ball, he's a little bit iffy. Would like a bit more balance and a bit more stamina, but honestly, if you look elsewhere, he's got plenty of attributes which I think are decent enough, and I think he's a very usable option in the J League Challenge. So with the skills he's got, the strengths he's got, Yes, he's got a few weaknesses, but I think there are enough, there are enough positives there with Nono to make up for that. And that makes him, for me, my pick out of the three stars. I think he's a very usable option as a right back in the JD change. And for a three-star contract, I think very good value. So these are my recommendations for three stars. I'm putting all five of the three stars on the screen because there are only five, so I might as well just summarize them all. You've got three strikers, all of which for me are a bit uninspiring. None of them really stand out. I've listed them in the order in which I would sign them. If you are going to get a striker with a three-star contract, I would start with Tanaguchi. The awareness is a bit low for striker, but he does have some other qualities and he's got a good selection of skills as well. I think he could do a job up front, maybe even just behind the attack if he focus on his shooting rather than his passing. Left wing, be careful on the ball because he's not great on the ball, but he does again, he does have a lot of qualities there coming off the left flank, especially with the whole player playing style. So versatile, especially with a super sub skill. For me, he's the pick out these three strikers for a three-star contract. Yamada, an all-rounder, I don't think he's quite so great. And then Elias, similar to Yamada, a bit of an all-rounder again. I don't think he's quite as good as Yamada, but they're both pretty similar. Um, but like I say, none of these three-star strikers for me are particularly great. But if I was going to pick one of them, Taniguchi for me, I think he's just got that bit of versatility about him. I think he just gets the edge of the other two. But if I'm using three-star contracts before these packs expire, I'm getting Nono first. As I mentioned when we looked at him just now, he's my pick of the bunch. I think he's a very usable right back. Good selection of skills. Yes, a few weaknesses, but he's got enough positives about him to, to outweigh those. I think he's a very decent value three-star card. But I think also Kalajinski is pretty decent as well. Yes, his balance is horrible and he's by no means a dribbler, but not every player has to be a dribbler. He's tidy enough on the ball. He's got a very nice passing for a three-star. He's got a decent selection of skills as well. So for me, both these guys, Nono, Nono and Kalajinski, uh, I think are a good value for a three-star contract. And if you're going to get a striker, I'd probably plant for Taniguchi. But these two, for me, are the picks out the three stars this month. So let's move on to the four stars. And again, we'll go into the Brazilian League first. We've got a few in here. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, four stars. Okay, we'll start with Danilo Botha. I guess that's probably not how you say it. Um, not going to speak for too long on this guy because I don't think he's very good. Um... We've got a build-up centre-back. He's a six-foot tall, not the tallest for a centre-back. Defensive awareness, yep, that's good. That's going to hit 90 with the game plan boost. Speed's going over 80 with the game plan boost, so that's two good attributes. But beyond that, what is there to get excited about? Tackling's okay, could be better. Aggression and engagement, both a bit low, very low. Um, on the right here, is he good in the air? Six-foot tall, 82 jumping. Yes, he's got aero superiority, but he is going to be a bit lacking in the air still. 
uh, physical contact 81 for me. I've always said physical contact is a, a very important attribute on a center back. The way they've tweaked physical contact now, it's even more important. So 81 physical contact. Yes, he's only a four star, but still, you're going to get found out. And that's too low for me. So is he good down the left? Technically, no, not really. You, you, you can't expect too many center backs to be great down there, especially a four star, but he's not great. Really not great. Skill set is pretty good. The only one that he's really lacking is blocker. Uh, heading and aerospirology, like I say, but with its height and the jumping attribute, he won't be particularly good in the air. On the ground, man marking, interception, slide, and tackle acrobatic clearance, great. Good selection, just blockers missing, really. So he's got most of the skills he needs. He's got very good awareness. He's got good speed for a centre-back, but outside of that, he is lacking. So for me, and I'm waving form as well, but for me, there aren't enough positives to, out out to outweigh the negatives with this guy. I don't think he's particularly good, uh, even for a four-star contract, unfortunately. Then we have... Pablo Vegetti. So we have a target man. He is six foot one, almost six foot two. He's not the tallest for a target man. Um, yes, he's got some qualities, this guy. Attacking where it's 91 before the game plan boost. Finishing 89, heading 88. So all three of those attributes are going past 90 with the game plan boost with a, with a good enough manager. But if this guy is a target man, a target man is going to just stand around waiting for long balls. They're not going to be particularly mobile. They're not going to be very aggressive with their movement. It's quite a frustrating playing style for me personally. If you're going to have a target man, uh, a player with that target man playing style, they need to be really physically strong and really good in the air. Because if they're not moving around much, you're going to have to just feed the ball into them, either either a high ball or a ball into their feet, and they're going to have to hold the ball up for you. This guy is horrible in the, in, on the ground with the ball at his feet. He can't pass the ball particularly well. He's slow, as you expect from a target man. But the most important area, you're thinking, okay, he's a target man. Does he make up for it by being strong where he needs to be? Six foot one, almost six foot two, 79 for jumping. I don't think this guy's going to be that great in the air. Physical contact 83, is that good? It's good for a striker, but for a target man, it's not great. I'm not sure this guy's going to be that effective at what he's supposed to be good at. That jumping in particular for me is quite concerning. If we look at his skills... Yes, there's aerial superiority there. We've got heading, acrobatic finishing, aerial superiority. Would it be good from crosses? I think decent. Would it be great from crosses? Would it be dominant? I don't think so. He does have some good skills, to be fair to him. Heel trick's a nice one. First time shot, of course, super important. Um, but, yeah. Uh, if you look at the skill set, you look at the playing style, you're thinking this guy is just going to have to be a real big, strong, physical uh, striker to win balls in the air for you and, and hold the ball up. And I don't think he's got the ability to do that. Yes, the awareness and finishing are fantastic. If you can pick him out in the box, he will absolutely take up good positions and take chances for you. Credit where it's due. When he does win a header, his heading is going to be good. He's got heading 88. That's going to, like I mentioned a moment ago, it's going past 90 with the game plan boost. His heading is going to be great, but it's winning the headers that's a concern for me because that's the one thing this guy's good at. He's not going to be making runs in behind the defense. He's not going to be great at holding the ball up. He's got to be good at winning the headers. And yes, his heading's great. But even though the physical conduct's not too bad at 83, 79 jumping when he's only six foot one, just shy of six two. I don't think he's gonna be as good in the air as you would want a target man to be. So yes, there are qualities. When he gets chances, he's absolutely gonna be really good at taking them. And he's gonna be very good at heading if you get him on the end of crosses. But if you've got big strong defenders challenging him challenging him in the air, I don't know how many headers he's gonna win. I don't think he's quite as good as you would want him to be for a target man. So yes, some qualities there, but for a four star contract for me. I'm going to have to say this guy doesn't look too great to me. And then we have Wellington Rato. So, roaming flank. I quite like that playing style on a wide man. It's a somewhat uncommon playing style. There's not too many good roaming flanks around. Um, and this guy is kind of just all right everywhere. He's just got a load of decent stats. Nothing too amazing. Um, let's start with this guy's skills. So... Double touch for the skillers. And then we've got long range curler, long range shooting, first time shot. So we've got a bunch of shooting skills. And then we've got one touch pass and pinpoint crossing. So one touch pass with low pass of 75. I don't think his passing is great. You'd have to be careful not to ask too much with his passing. But with pinpoint crossing, 85 lofted pass, 81 curl, 84 kicking power. This guy's got a pretty nice cross on him. He's left footed. He can play left or right. So if you want to make use of his crossing, I guess you'd want to put him on the left flank and he, he will be able to put crosses in for you. He's going to be a good cross of the ball. Pace, not amazing. Acceleration's decent at 85. He's not the quickest though, so I don't think he'll be tearing past defenders too easily. And he's not that amazing on the ball. Like I say, he's kind of just all right everywhere. There's nothing really outstanding. I think his crossing is the one real strength he's got. He's not bad on the ball, but for a winger, I'd like a bit more. But 
I don't know how much you can really ask of him as a pro on a four-star contract. He's going to be about 83 or so for his ball control and dribbling with it, with uh, your game plan boost. Tight possession will hit 80 as well. Attacking awareness is going to hit 80 as well with your game plan boost. And as a roaming flank, he will be drifting inside. He will take up some interesting positions. Finishing 80 as well on a wide man is decent. And again, with his finishing 80 and also curl and kicking power in the 80s. And he does have long-range curl as well as long-range shooting and first-time first shot. I think this guy could be fairly useful on either flank. I don't think it's a brilliant card. Like I say, he's not brilliant on the ball. I'd like a bit more, but more speed. Uh, but ultimately, on the right flank, cutting in onto his left foot with the shooting skills and his finishing attribute, he could well score goals for you. Roaming flank again, remember, take up interesting positions and then cut on the left flank, get up and down the left flank, putting crosses in with his left foot. He's going to be pretty decent at that. So I think you've got a, a player who could be useful. He's not amazing. I don't think he's going to get in many people's squads for divisions and stuff like that. But for the Brazilian in China, certainly, he could be useful. I wouldn't consider him to play centre forward or SS because as an SS, I don't think his passing is good enough. You can maybe get away with it if you focus on his shooting, to be fair. Um, centre forward, no chance. Attacking whereas isn't good enough. Finishing is not quite good enough. But like I say, right wing, in, inverted winger, left wing, old school winger, putting crosses in. I think you've got two uses for this guy. So for a four-star contract, not an amazing card, but I think he could be a useful one to pick up. And the last four star from Brazil, we have Hugo, and we have a defensive fullback. So, this guy's decent. Uh, like with the three stars, the, the pick of the three stars for me was a, a fullback. I think this guy might be my pick from the four stars. I don't personally like defensive fullbacks, but I know a lot of people do. And if you want a defensive fullback who's primarily good at defending, I think this guy could really appeal to a lot of people. So, is the pace amazing? No, but I think you can get away with it. I think he's just about quick enough. Kicking power is decent. Physical contact is just about okay. That's what I look for for a fullback about the 70 mark. Ideally more, especially now. I've not played many matches yet, but time will tell if physical contact is any more important than it was. But I think 70 certainly up to now has been the, the mark for me in a fullback. Bounce I'd like a little bit more. Uh, Stamina is great. It's going past 90 with the game plan boost. All of his defensive attributes down the middle are going past 80 with the game plan boost. That's great. That's what I look for on a five star. This is only a four star card, remember. Again, though, you've got a fullback where you're going to have to be very careful on the ball. He's not comfortable in possession of the ball, and his low pass isn't great. So whenever you get this guy on the ball, be careful. There are people who don't mind that. If you just like, if you don't mind uh, a fullback to be poor technically, you're just going to keep it simple. That's fine, but you've got to be careful with this guy. Lofty pass 79. That will go past 80 with the game plan boost, but he does not have pinpoint crossing. But is that important on a defensive fullback? He's not going to get forward much. I'm not sure. He's got a dipping shot and long way shooting, but again, is he going to get forward enough for those to be useful? I doubt it. Low lofted pass. That's a nice enough skill to have, but this is a defensive fullback. He's going to be in your team to defend, and we have man marking, interception, blocker, sliding tackle, acrobatic clearance. You've got a great selection of skills defensively. I think as a defensive fullback for a four-star contract, this guy's really good value. Be careful with him on the ball because he's not going to be comfortable in possession, but defensively i think he's got a lot of qualities he's got a really good selection of skills and for those of us who like a defensive fullback who's going to be in your team primarily to defend i think this guy could be really good value for a four-star contract especially in the brazilian league challenge but even outside of it you could get away with him and in, in, in maybe even in divisions at times that might be a bit of a stretch but he's certainly got qualities like i say so yeah for a four-star contract you like a defensive fullback i think this guy could be really good value And now into the Turkish League. Which four stars have we got here? So let's start with Romulo. So my first thought on this guy. How is this guy a four star? If this guy was a three star, I'd say he's not very good. I would say he's not great value. Attacking wins at 83 could be worse, but it's not brilliant. Finishing 86 is decent enough. Pace is a little bit... He's not quite as quick as I'd like a goal poacher to be. I always say it. I like a goal poacher to have pace to get in behind the defence because that's what they're going to look to do all the time. Kicking bow is decent. Physical contact's going by state with the game plan boost. He's very tall, actually. I just noticed that. He's six foot four. Interesting. Have we got a, a guy who's good in the air? No, sadly not. He's got a heading, but there's no aerial superiority. His jumping's only 73. So with his height, you'd hope he'd have the skills and the attributes to make the most of most of our tall years and make him very, you know, make him dominant in the air. But sadly, the only relevance of his height is that he's going to be extremely awkward on the ball. 66 balance, terrible attributes on the ball. You're going to have to be extremely careful if you get on the ball with this, with this guy because he'll be clunky and awkward. 
and what more is there to say about and what qualities has he got has he got i mean he will he will get into some good positions and take chances for you but is he even going to be that great at that he'll kind of be all right at it but if you look at the skills there first time shot yeah it's important heading as well if you give him a free header he'd be decent at it but even then 75 heading it's not gonna be great in the air long range curler good one one touch pass helpful his passing is not too bad i guess but yeah i'm not going to talk much longer on this guy ultimately for me this just looks like a three-star card and if this was a three-star card i'd say he could maybe do a job but he's not brilliant for a four-star contract yikes not good value for me so yeah this card's a bit of a dud for me and our next four star is abdul karim bardachi sorry if i said that wrong so about six or three good height defensive attributes and a four star fairly decent oh my god this guy is the slowest player ever so there are people who don't mind center backs being slow but i think most people would agree this guy is too slow jumping 84 six foot three if he's got errors priority that'd be fine physical is great 93 heading, heading 90 is great as well unraving form he does have errors priority we've got a good selection of skills here interception man marking blocker acrobatic clearance captain's defying spirit okay he's only really missing sliding tackle um could do with heading as well got errors of priority that's that's the important one so it'll at least be winning the headers and his heading's 90 so i don't think we're, i don't think missing the heading skill is a big deal so if you're missing sliding tackle, no big deal in my opinion. It'd be nice if he had the whole lot, but he's got a good selection of skills there. He's just really got one real problem, and that's that he's incredibly slow. So if you don't mind that lack of pace, good for you. Uh, go get this guy, because he doesn't have pace, uh, but he does have strengths elsewhere. He's physically and aerially strong. Defensive attributes for a four-star are all right. They're not amazing, but they're pretty decent. Tackling is going past night with a game plan boost. Aggression already is not comfortable on the ball but he's a big physical guy you'd expect that it's just really the pace to be honest that's the one thing if you really don't mind a, a defender being slow as hell and especially on a, a destroyer if a destroyer is going to be stepping forward and being quite aggressive stepping out of his position at times which they do do you want to be racing back into position with 59 speed i don't but again it's personal preference if you don't mind that if you really think that speed's not an issue at all in a center back this guy's got a lot of qualities could be useful for you but for me personally I can't recommend a center at 59 speed because most opponents that you come up against will have some strikers who have at least decent pace. And this guy is going to be a big problem in those cases. So yeah, lots of quality, but that speed for me is just brutal. So I, I really couldn't recommend this guy. Now, this is an interesting one. And this is an interesting one for two reasons. Firstly, Katucha used to be a bit of a my club legend. I think, seem to remember he was a bronze ball and he, and he was quite decent for a bronze ball as a centre forward. The second reason he's interesting is he's incredibly fast. 98 speed, 95 acceleration. Wow. So do we have an exciting card in our hands? No, because the, those are the only two reasons why he's interesting. The rest of his attributes suck. This for me, I, I don't know what to make of it. I mean, he's not great on the ball. Are you going to use him as a left midfielder as, as, as they've got him here? A creative playmaker who can't pass uh i mean does he have the passing skills no he's got shooting skills long range curler rising shot long range shooting acrobatic finishing first time shot okay so he's got the shooting skills 78 finishing 79 attacking awareness could you get away with him as a, as a center forward maybe certainly with that pace but is he worth it to play as a center forward for a four star contract no uh what else we got here pinpoint crossing wow so you've got 72 lofted pass 69 curl 78 kicking power and he's got pinball crossing. So, yeah, his crossing is not going to be good. Outside curl is nice. Fair enough. Super sub. Okay. Frank Spirit. To be honest, if you used to really love this guy in my club, you might want to pick this guy up for nostalgic reasons. If you do that, I would say stick him up front. But maybe he's off the bench as a super sub. The attacking awareness and the finishing will be hitting 80 with the game plan boost, but still both a bit low, especially on a four-star card. But with that pace as a super sub, you could well find you can get him behind the defense and, and really do something for you in the second half as a super sub. Uh, he does have the shooting skills for sure to back him up, but on the right, with terrible cro terrible crossing and not being great on the ball, I don't see it. Creative playmaker playing style will be active wide right as well, so he won't be too aggressive with his forward runs. So yes, he's going to be rapid on the ball, but with that pace, you want to make the most of that pace with him with his kind of attacking movement. And as a creative playmaker, I don't like that play playing style on wide men. They're not aggressive enough with their forward running. They like to kind of hold back and, and wait for you to give them the ball so that they can play make. This guy doesn't want to play make. I don't know why he's got that playing style. He can't pass. 
what you want this guy to be as a whole player or maybe even a prolific winger roaming flank making runs off the ball darting behind defenders with his pace but uh yeah for me he doesn't make sense as a left midfielder he doesn't make sense as a, as a right winger i think what you've got here is an incredibly quick striker who just doesn't have very good awareness or finishing really so that's how i'd use him off the bench but even then for a four-star contract i think you would only really want to pick him up for nostalgic reasons if he used to use his guy in my club in which case he could be a fun super sub but even then inconsistent form as well i'm not sure he's going to be that good value for a four-star contract for anyone really And now we have a similar card, to be honest, because again, we've got some really good pace and we've got really good dribbling, but not a great deal else. And again, inconsistent form. So Rashika, he's a wide forward, left or right. You can play him through the middle as attack middle and SS, but you're going to play him as a, as a kind of number 10 in that area of the pitch with his passing being that bad. Good luck if you do, because I'm not. Um, I'm looking at this guy as a wide forward. That's really where he's going to want to be. A lot of these attributes below the 18 mark, but Finishing is going to go over 80 with the game plan boost. So he's going to be able to shoot. He's not going to be brilliant at shooting by any means, but he will be able to finish for you. That dribbling is fantastic. So with that, what's that, 94, 95 with the game plan boost for dribbling. Speed's not incredible, but it's pretty good. It's fairly good. Acceleration is great. So he's going to be quick. He can dribble. It's pretty clear what you're going to want to do with this guy. Get him on the ball and dribble at defenders. Has he got some skill moves? Yes, he does. So... This card is really just one for the dribblers. Um, he's got through passing, so okay, so his passing won't be quite so bad if you try a through ball, but it's not going to be brilliant still. 71 low pass, so be careful not to ask too much from with his passing. Outside curls a handy one, acrobatic finishing, dipping shot, but yeah, soul control, bunch of skill moves, great pace, dribbling. If you're a real dribbler, you love doing your skill moves, trying to dribble past defenders, this guy this guy could be a fun card. You're just going to have to be very careful with his passing, but he, he does have reasonable finishing. And playing him as a wide forward for the dribblers, he could be a fun card to have. But if you're not one, if you're not really much of a dribbler, if you're more interested in, uh, you know, patient build up, passing and moving, uh, you don't want to be doing all the skill moves and the dribbling. You're more interested in the end product. Not sure it'll be quite for you. Uh, I think it's just one where depends how depends what kind of players you like in those wide positions. But if you play to his strengths and if he suits you, he could be a fun card to pick up. And now off to Japan to finish our tour of the four stars. What have we got? So we've got three three stars, two four stars, three four stars in fact. So we'll start with the goalie. Got Tani from Machida de Zelvia. And he's not great for a three for a four star. So again, I'm looking at this card thinking, okay, is he a three star? No, he's a four star. Yes, the reflexes are tremendous at 90. But look at his other goalie attributes. 82 awareness, 80 catching, 79 parrying, 83 reach. On a player of the month goalkeeper, 78 for jumping is astronomically high. Um, wow, I wonder if they've started put, giving these goalkeepers reasonable jumping for player of the week and player of the month cards. I don't know, but uh, yeah, he's kind of got slightly low attributes everywhere except reflexes, to be honest. So yes, he's got, got great reflexes. He'll probably make some great saves at times, but the rest of the time, I think this guy's going to come out short for you. Uh, I don't think this is a great keeper at all, to be honest. It's, it's, there's more to goalkeeping than reflexes and... He, he's just not good enough elsewhere for me. So for a four-star contract for me, unfortunately, not good value. Rafael Alas, this guy has been tearing up in real life. He joined Kyoto Sanger quite recently, and he's pulling them out of the relegation zone. He's He's got, I think, like, has he got seven goals, I think, in about five games, something like that. He's been really, really good for them. Is this a great card? I'm not sure it quite does justice to how good he's been in real life. I fully expect if he maintains his form... Up to the end of the season, there'll be a good uh, Showtime version. There'll probably be a five-star card of him of some kind, either a Showtime one or just one of the kind of regular five stars in one of those packs. But uh, yeah, this card, four stars. Yeah, he's all right. He's an all-rounder. He's got a bit of attacking awareness. The finishing is great. There's the big strength. That's going past 90 with the game plan boost. So he's definitely going to be able to take chances for you. He's not great on the ball. His passing is not brilliant. Heading 81 is decent. Jumping 77. He's five foot 11. So he's not going to be great in the end. Does he have aerial superiority? Yes, he does. Doesn't have heading, though. So again, aerial superiority, but is he going to win that many headers? I'm not sure. And he doesn't have the heading skills, so I think he's going to be okay in the air, but just not brilliant. The balance is a bit lacking. That's frustrating. Kicking power is okay. Pace is kind of average. He's a fox in the box. He's not going to be making as, as many, you know, he's not going to be as, as aggressive as a goal poacher trying to get him behind the defense. He'll be making slightly later runs forward. He'll be more available for kind of you know, feeding the ball into feet and, and getting him involved in the build-up, holding the ball up and stuff, but he's not that great on the ball, so... 
yeah this guy for me yes he's got great finishing and he'll take chances for you a bit of physical contact again as i mentioned that's that seems to be a more important attribute now than it was but i don't know if this guy's a great card he's all right he's got he's got you know he's kind of okay with a lot of his attributes and with his skills not many there but first time shot acrobatic finishing arrow superiority front spirit he's got some decent skills for a striker he will take chances for you but outside of that i'm not sure the rest of the attributes are that impressive to be honest so i, I expect there will be a better version of him at some point and for me for a four star contract i'm not sure he's that much better than the three star strikers to be honest and even they're not brilliant so it's it's not a bad card for a four star contract but i don't think it's a particularly good one either and we finish up with Araki so centre back for San Freche who are top of the league they finally overtake Machida Zelvia this is a decent card to be honest for a 4 star uh, the one real area where this guy is lacking a little bit is the aerial and physical physical contact 83 that could be worse but I would like it to be a bit harder this is, this is only a 4 star card so we can't expect 5 star attributes across the board that's very much a four star attribute, 83 physical contact, and the jumping as well, 79. He's six foot one. Has he got aerial superiority to make up for the jumping? Yes. Okay. So we've got aerial superiority, and then we've got man marking, interception, blocker, slide and tackle, fighting spirit. So all we're really lacking is acrobatic clearance and heading. We can just about live without acrobatic clearance, even though in an ideal world we would have that. Heading, do we really need it? Mm, you can kind of get away without it. He's going past 80 with the game plan boost for heading. Likewise for jumping and with aerial superiority. Six foot one. I think he'll be okay in the air. Not brilliant. That's probably the, that's the one real weakness for me in the air. He, he could be a little bit iffy, but he could be worse though. He, he does at least have aerial superiority. Awareness and tackling already at 90 before the game plan boost. 84 aggression, 86 engagement. They'll be up into the mid-high 80s with the game plan boost. He's not particularly quick, but he's not disastrously slow either. Certainly not like Bardacci from the turkey pack. Stamina is decent. Yeah, he's, he's kind of an okay centre-back. For me, I can't tell you this is a great card, but with unwavering form, with a pretty good selection of skills, no glaring weakness, just slightly lacking in the aerial and physical department. I think on the whole, as a destroyer centre-back, this guy's all right. I think for a four-star contract, if you need more centre-back options for your JD squad, I think he could certainly do a job and give you reasonable value for a four-star contract. I've actually got a four-star version of this guy already from the one of those Showtime JD packs. I had got that over a year ago, I think. He's only got a couple of skills. He's really lacking in skills, but he's done okay for me, to be honest. So this one having more skills and the attributes being pretty similar on the halted one I've got, I'm going to be getting this card. I would like a bit more aerial and physical strength, but on the whole, I think all things considered for a four-star contract, you'd have to say this is reasonable value. I think this is a decent card for four stars. So my recommendations out of all the four stars, I'm picking these four guys out. We just looked at Araki. I think he's a decent centre-back option. He is a little bit lacking physically and aerially, but I think on the whole, he's he's good enough value for a four star. I think with the skills he's got and all the strengths he's got, and, and I don't think he's lacking too badly physically and aerially. He's got aerial superiority. I think he'll be a pretty usable option for you if you need another centre back for your JLE squad. Hugo, I think this is the pick out of all the four stars. I think obviously with, with all these cards, it comes down to what you really want from a card, what you really like. You know, from a fullback, I like attacking fullbacks to get forward and to be able to put crosses in and join in with the attack. So he's not really one for me, but. Even for me, looking at this guy, I'd have to accept that anyone who likes a defensive fullback, this really is a, a pretty good value card, I think. So if you like a defensive fullback, I would recommend picking this guy up. I think he's the pick of the bunch. And then these two guys, two wingers. Like I say, it comes down to what you want. What do you want from a, a wide man? If you're a dribbler, you want to get on the ball, have pace and dribbling, and just dribble your way past defenders. I think Rashika could be really good fun, a really good, good fun card for you to pick up. But if you would like guys to be more about sort of end product football IQ and, you know, taking on good positions, being able to put a pass or a cross in and, and shoot and, and get goals for you, certainly with the Roman Frank playing style, I think Wellington Rato could be a pretty effective card. So depends what kind of thing you like. Rato doesn't really have the pace or the trickery, but he's got a bit of product about him. He could be a useful one to pick up, can play on either flank. Rashika, just pace and dribbling. And for players, people who like that type of player on the wings, could be a really fun one to pick up. So four cards for me that, depending on what kind of thing you like, could be a really good value card to pick up for a four star contract. Now we'll get on to the five stars. And we have a five star in Brazil. I think there's only one in here. I'll double check. Yeah, just the one. Jose Lopez. So this guy at first glance, he kind of looks decent. Doesn't look that amazing, but I think this guy could be pretty decent, you know. So he's a fox in the box. He's six foot two. Attacking wise is decent. It's a shame it's just not at least one higher because if that was 87, a good enough manager would get him to 90 with the game plan boost. But it's still decent. It's still going to get to high 80s with the game plan boost. On the ball, 
again be careful he's not comfortable in possession so be careful with him but this is the thing with this guy six foot two fox in the box he doesn't have the target man playing style but 91 for heading 93 for jumping physical contact 85 aerial superiority this guy looks like he's going to be an absolute beast in the air six foot two 93 jumping yes please this guy is really good if you like your strikers to be big physical and good in the air get on the end of crosses this guy looks like he's bullet heading at home he's interesting finishing as well i just skip straight past that 87 he's going to have 90 finishing with the game plan boost kicking power it's not not brilliant but it's going past eight with the game plan boost speed's getting to 80 with the game plan boost so for a, i say target man i'm going to describe this guy as a target man because yes he's got a box in the box playing style but he's built as a target man i think he'd be really effective when used that way as a fox in the box if i have a big physical guy up front i'm going to put crosses in long play long balls forward i want the fox in the box playing style because they do seem to make they seem to time their runs better to get on the end of crosses than than poachers but they're more mobile they're more aggressive with their movement than target men so as a target man that's the playing style for me and with the strength this guy's got if you are putting crosses in playing numbers forward i think he could be really really neat yes it's a five star contract but he's got pretty good awareness he's got very good finishing and with that heading the jumping the physical the fact he's 6-2 and he's got arrow superiority i think this is a really good striker to pick up if you if this is your kind of strike if you like a big physical striker if you could put crosses in heading arrow superiority there like i say we've also got long range curler first time shot and outside curler that finishing 87 i think this is a, a very good striker to be honest uh, for a five-star contract for a freebie yes there are going to be better five-star strikers knocking around but i just think with the, the height the aerial superiority 93 jumping the, the aerial and physical stats and the fact he has good awareness and finishing making those runs into the box as a fox in the box to get on the end of crosses his ability to finish as a big physical striker this guy to me i think is a good card uh he could be a very interesting one to pick up so from one big physical quote-unquote target man to another one and there's one in turkey i'm just going to double check again there's only one five star here yep and it is adding zeko so this guy is actually a target man and again you kind of built like one here attacking wears at 90 finishing 91 heading 91 he's got some great attributes there on the ball again not gonna be too comfortable but the ball control at least is at 80 which is good this guy's slow though you would kind of expect that. i mean 38 years old zeko and he's a target man he's a big physical guy so not a lot of pace there kicking bar 84 is decent this is the one attribute for me that puts me off because i do sometimes like a big physical guy up front but number one i don't like the target man playing style but number two yes he's six foot four and yes he does have aerial superiority but 77 jumping I'm not sure how dominant Zeko is going to be in the air. You know, the little guy you just looked at in Brazil, 93 jumping, and he's only two inches shorter with aerial superiority. Zeko, I don't think he's going to be as good in the air. We've got qualities elsewhere, but very slow, not too comfortable on the ball. Passing's all right, I guess. And with that jumping, that's again, I've said this already, but on a target man, you're not going to get much use out of him if you're trying to play through balls and behind the defense. He's not going to be racing on the ball, through balls behind the defense. And even if he did, he's too slow to get on the end of them. Is he going to be great in the build-up? He could be okay. You know, 80 ball control. Passing's all right. Does he have passing skills? He's got one touch pass, not through passing. He could be okay in the build-up if you're very careful with him on the ball. But, and, and I'm waving for him. I'll give him that. And the rest of his skills, we'll look at the rest of his skills. You know exactly what he's got. First time shot, heel trick, acrobatic finishing, heading, of course. Soul control, nice. Rising shot. Penalties, captaincy. And of course, error superiority. But the one thing for me with this guy target man it's personal preference but i dislike that playing style and if he's gonna have that target man playing style he needs to be dominant in the air and he's not is he bad in the air no of course not because he's a very tall guy at six foot four he does a rare superiority the heading's great when he wins the headers but jumping 77 for me is a disappointment and that's going to hold him back so there are qualities there if you really like zeko a lot of people do and if you don't if you're okay with the target man playing style he could be an effective one for you certainly he's going to get into good enough positions he's certain there's no question he's gonna be able to take chances for you but how you know it's, it's the lack of movement with the target man playing style i think a lot of people will be uh, put off by the playing style and, and for me if he's got that playing style as a target man he needs to be better in the air and with 77 for jumping he's not dominant enough for me for me for me to be able to recommend him as a five-star contract so if you do want a big physical striker to, to be able to win headers for you 
for me personally, I'll stick with Jose Luis from the Brazilian pack because I don't think this Deco, Deco card is actually as good as it could be. Or Jose Lopez, I should say. I got his name wrong. I do apologize, Jose. So, no 5,000 in the J-League. So we move on to Magical Dribbler. And we've got six five-star players in here. So, let's start with the lowest rated. We'll start with Noni Madawaka. So, there is a very obvious thing with these cards. They're good at dribbling. And Madawaka is good at dribbling. And he's also rapid. So, there's your obvious strengths, but... Sadly, with this guy, we're lacking elsewhere because he's not very good at passing and he's not particularly good at shooting either. There was a player of the week version of Madaraka where they made him much better at finishing. I think he had 80-something for finishing and they added some shooting skills. So if you want a Madaraka who can score goals, that was the version for you. If you didn't get that one, I mean, can you make this guy better at finishing? If we hit the game plan boost, look at him fully boosted. Where are you going to get the points from? I think pace is the obvious place, but he's not going to have a great deal of kicking power if we take much speed away. I don't really want to go below 90 for balance, but if you really wanted them product, I think you'd have to do something along those lines. Um, I'm going to go down to 4 on dexterity, but then look at the attacking when it's going down to 71. This is one of these cards where you, you, everything you put high, every, you know, every attribute you try and get higher, something goes too low. Um, I think it's going to be hard to really bounce them out. Um, could we take the dribbling down a bit? Might have to. Got to get some more end product on this guy. Maybe just go eight on everything from shooting downwards. That might be the best way to do it. That yeah, that I think is the 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 best way to build this guy. More balanced build. So yeah, he's rapid. He's gonna be a great dribbler. And of course, with his skills, he's got a bunch of the bunch of skill moves. We've got first time shot there, pinpoint crossing. He's not gonna be great at crossing though. And he's a left footer playing on the right as well. I don't think he's gonna be too useful for for people who like to put a lot of crosses in, but. Yeah, first time shot and a load of, load of skill moves, really. That's all you've really got. So, yes, he could be fun for the dribblers, but I'm not sure this guy's really great value for a fire star. There's been a... I think there's one that's in the actually in the the 100 player pack that we've got the chance deals for from contract renewals. Um, I think that one goes to 96. This one oh, looks like it also goes to 96. Is that what this goes to? 93? I'm getting confused. Um, yeah, I, I seem to remember that one goes one higher than this one, but I've looked at the attributes and it looked like it's pretty similar to this one, to be honest. So, yeah. Um, could be fun for the dribblers, but it just comes down to end product, like I say. Um, you would definitely need to put some skills on him. Long range curler for a start, and then maybe probably one touch pass and through passing. Um, if he did that, he could be a fun one if you like the dribblers, if you like the pacey dribbly players out wide, but... Uh, I'm not sure he's, he's necessarily worth a five-star contract. Um, if you look at his GP card on auto allocation, if we auto allocate this guy, if you look at uh, Madawaka's GP card, his GP card is actually quicker. They don't normally nerf anything on these types of trainable card, but his GP card is actually quicker. If you reallocate the points in his GP card, you can kind of balance it out and make him not too far off this one, to be honest. Uh, obviously not quite as good because this is boosted, but if you reallocate the points, take a bit away from the pace down to the level that this one's at you've got a few to spare to put elsewhere and, and like i say he's pretty comparable to this guy he's not quite as good but not a million miles away so yeah for me personally the fact he's not that much better than his gp card and the fact he's not got a great deal of end product not the most exciting one for a five-star contract so i can't really recommend him but if you just like the dribblers with the pace and the dribbling and the skill moves he could nonetheless be a really fun card to pick up and before i forget i know js will remind me they have given him a face scan. So he's got a face scan now. So so he's got that going for him. But yeah, might suit you. But for, for those who aren't really that keen on the pacey dribbler types, I'm not sure he's that brilliant of a card. So let's go next to Nelson Semedo. So we've got an attacking right back. And let's go over to Ipo Wahab again. We'll see how good he is. So, did 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 e football hub. There we are. So, here he is an auto allocation. I think that's auto allocation. I was playing around before. Yeah, uh, fully boosted. He's quick. Um, got pretty good kicking power as well for fullback. 
good balance, good stamina, physical contact's okay. Defensively, awareness is a little bit on the low side, but he's 80 plus on the rest. Very nice on the wall, as you'd expect. Again, all these got all these cards are all about dribbling. Low enough to pass, a bit dodgy. So yeah, he's got some qualities. Um, he's got quite a few good real qualities here, to be honest. But um I think you need bouncing out. You know what I'm gonna do, what I always do. We need a bit of uh a bit more passing ability. We're gonna take some pace away. Don't want to take too much away. I'll just get him out to the 80 mark on low and lofted pass, that'll do. And if we take one off aerial, still at 70 physical contact, but now we've got two, so we can put another one on, I guess, dribbling. Yeah, just do that. I'll do that, round him out a bit. He does, yeah, he does have pinpoint crossing. So, 80 lofted pass now. Not got much curl, though, but he does have decent kicking power, so he's got a decent cross on him. Not amazing. Uh, don't ask too much of him, but his crossing shouldn't be bad. Soul control's nice. A few skill moves, of course. Um, acrobatic clearance, the only defensive skill, though. There's your problem. So, you would need to put interception on this guy for a start. Probably man marking, maybe his blocker, but yeah, going forward, he's, he's fine. But defensively, he needs one or two skills uh, for sure. Um, again, if you compare him to his GP card, he has actually had a decent boost across the board, but he's got less speed than his GP card on auto allocation. A bit weird that they've done that, but yeah, certainly everywhere else, though, he has had a nice boost. So, is it, if you've got his GP card, this is an upgrade. Um, there was a player of the week card that's pretty similar to this one. Um, if you got that one, you probably don't need this one. If you don't have that one, and if you want a good version, like I say, good boost on his GP card. Um, but you just need one or two defensive skills. If you give him one or two defensive skills, outside of his defensive awareness being a bit dodgy, as an attacking fullback with great pace, good balance, of stamina, everything else is pretty good, to be honest. He could be a really fun attacking fullback to pick up, to be honest. So yeah, could be a decent card to pick up. Where are we? So let's go to Isco next, who still has an ancient face scan. Come on, Konami. Sort your brother out. His face is different now, or his hair is at least. Right. Let's teleport over to e we'll Hub again, and we will have a look at how good this guy is. So he's pretty much on a par with previous feature versions. We'll just fully max him out, game plan boost him. So yeah, obviously very tidy technically. He's fantastic technically. There's been a bunch of feature Isco cards, and he's pretty much on, on a par, like I say, with them. Um, he's had a slight boost from his GP card, but nothing special, though. Again, like I said with Samedo, um, well, it's actually Samedo had a decent boost from his GP card. It's more Madueko, who's only had a slight boost from his GP card. Isco's the same. If you've got his GP card, are you happy with that one? This isn't that much better, to be honest. Um, but if you don't have any version of Isco, it is a good card. Um, they have actually changed a couple of skills. They've taken away i think acrobatic finishing and no look pass and they've given him chop turn and cut behind and turn if you like those skills you might be happy with that uh for me not sure it makes a great deal of difference but obviously we've got a bunch of skill moves there for the dribbling again that's the thing with this pack soul control as well is lovely long range color one touch pass three passing weighted pass got a good selection of skills there He's a, he's a creative playmaker. He's got great passing. Wonderful dribbling. But uh, the one concern with this guy, you know I'll say it. You can't ignore it. 70 speed, he's slow. He's not the worst thing in the world for a playmaker. Um, some people don't mind that at all. Uh, if you don't mind the lack of speed or the qualities you've got elsewhere, this could be a really, really, really fun card to have. A very effective one. Stamina terrible as well. I keep that in mind. It might be worth putting super sub on him if you can. And bring them, bring them on second half, maybe the last half hour. Could be a brilliant one to come on and, and uh, dismantle people's defenses. Um, if you were going to reallocate some points, maybe bounce them out a bit better. I think the obvious place to get points would be dribbling. But if you look at where the points are allocated, they've not gone particularly high anywhere. So I don't know how many points you've really got that we can play with. Um, if you went down to just four and dribbling, you're still in the 90s. He's still great on the ball there. I'm not going to go below 90 on his passing. But uh, we can go as high as... 75 for speed and we also get his kicking power to 80 don't underestimate kicking power i've mentioned before i'm going to do a video about that at some point because kicking power is an important attribute um yeah i would personally do that whether you stick with the auto allocation you really don't mind the lack of pace it's up to you but 
yeah, like I say, this is a, a version of Isco where if you don't have a version of him at all, it could be a fun one to pick up if he's your kind of player as a creative playmaker. He's really nice on the ball with very nice passing. Um, obviously, we like players to have a lot of pace. He probably won't suit you. He might frustrate you. Certainly on the wings, he's not quick enough. But uh, like I say, be mindful of the fact that he's not had that much of a boost on his GP card. So if you've got his GP card, you're happy enough with it, you might not really need it. It's a bit of a shame they're not boosted it more, but it's still pretty much on the power of the previous versions of him. And it is a good card. If you look at it in isolation, like I say, great on the ball, great passing, especially if you go with the auto allocation. Incredible on the ball. Got some amazing quads. And if the qualities work for you, and if you like the playing style, and you don't mind the lack of pace and stamina, it could be a really fun card to pick up. So, who's next? Let's go next to Vitinha. So, Vitinha from PSG Orchestrator. Let's jump over to eFootball Hub again and we'll see how good this guy is. So, the good news with this guy, and I'll just fully boost him up, game plan boost. The good news with this guy, he has actually had a good boost from his GP card. Uh, some of the cards in this pack haven't really been improved that much, so it's, it's questionable how worthwhile it is using your contracts on them if you've got the GP cards. But this guy is actually a, a significantly better than his, uh, his GP guy. He's, he's a bunch higher on a lot of his attributes. Um, it's one of the better featured versions of him that we've had as well. One skill change, they've taken away Sombrero. They've added Marseille Turn. I'm not sure that's overly game-changing, but there you go. Um, we already have... One touch pass and through passing. Got weighted pass as well. Heel trick and outside curler. And then with his shooting, got long range, long range curler and dipping shot. It's got soul control, of course. He's lovely on the ball. Similar to Wisco, to be honest. The way the attributes are balanced, very similar. Fantastic on the ball. Exceptional passing. That's really, really good passing. It's comparable to a lot of legend attacking midfielders and centre midfielders, to be honest. He's got a bit of defensive ability. Um... On the right there, not the quickest, like I say, not too far off Isco, the kind of the way the the attributes are balanced. Decent kicking power, good balance, stamina's great. Um yeah, I it depends how you're gonna use him as an orchestrator. That playing style will not be active uh, attacking midfield. You could well use this guy as an attacking midfielder. If you wanted to use him as an attacking midfielder, you could ditch the defending. Uh I'll go straight to dexterity first. You don't need all that passing. Get that, that attacking awareness up to 80. Um, maybe he's put another one on there actually gets acceleration up to 19 and 3 points left stick it on his speed give him a bit more speed yeah could do that that could be a nice attacking with field build still really nice in the ball really nice passing attacking with past 80 I just noticed his shooting actually it's pretty poor at 64 uh, can we nick a bit from passing can we get his hang on yeah we can get up to 70 for shooting oh we got one spare uh, stick on well physical contact's important now isn't it yeah attacking midfielder attacking awareness past 80 still great on the ball still 90 low pass got lovely passing still finishing up to 70 acceleration up to 90 balance 95 he's gonna be super nimble this guy he's got a fairly low center of gravity 172 stamina at 90 as well and attacking mid is fantastic so yeah as an attacking midfielder with no active playing style and i've just noticed the form as well if you if he maintains his form at psg you're gonna get a lot of a and b form so yeah, as an attack midfielder, great. Going back to centre midfielder, an orchestrator will kind of sit around the middle of the park. They won't be too aggressive with their forward running. They'll just be a kind of deep line playmaker, sitting deep, looking to get on the ball and orchestrate things. Um, if you play them that way, forget the shooting. Um, what would we do? I still want to go to six and dexterity, get that balance to 90. Um, uh, yeah, I'd probably just do that. In fact, no, I'll take four off dribbling and give him a bit more defensive ability. If he's going to be sitting deep, he's got to be able to put his foot in and do a bit of defensive work. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, as an orchestrator, you're going to need at least one other midfielder behind him doing the defensive work for him because he's not physically strong. He's not brilliant defensively, even though you can put a bunch of points on his defensives and improve him there. No defensive skills whatsoever. So you're going to, you're going to be focusing on this guy's attacking ability. Um... And I'll probably build him similar to this. You could take some of the defensives away if you've got at least one, maybe two midfielders behind him, anchor men, destroyers, whatever, doing the defensive work. Focus on this guy's ability to get on the ball and create chances. Could be a really useful one, um, depending how you build him. Auto allocation obviously went goes ham on all these technicals here. It's entirely up to you what you do. And the build I did for attacking midfield is probably what I'd personally do, bearing in mind that that's what he's good at. He's not good at defending. 
I would make the most of him going forward. But uh, however you build him, he's a good boost from his GP card. It's one of the better versions of him that we've had. You can train him. And it's a good card. If he suits you, he's a very, uh, a very attacking orchestrator with fantastic technical ability. Yeah, if that suits you, it could be a really nice card to pick up. And next we will go to John Stones. So John Stones build up centre back. Let's jump over to eFootball Hub again. And what do we have? We have a build up centre back. And this is a, a decent version of Stones. Um compared to his GP card, it's it's better. It's not a massive boost, really, apart from on the ball. Obviously, with this pack having the dribbling theme, these guys are good at dribbling, and they've boosted John Stones on the ball. For a centre-back, he's great on the ball now. Level 1, no points on his dribbling attributes at all. He's really nice on the ball for a centre-back. So, that's interesting. You kind of expect that with Stones, but especially with this version. Um, defensively down the middle there, fantastic. Great defensive attributes. On the right, decent pace for a centre-back. The jumping and physical are all right. I would like a bit more on the physical contact. We'll see if we can shuffle the points around in a second. Um, he's comparable to other versions. There've been other. I think there's been a 96 version of Stones, um, so slightly better than this one, but this one a bit better on the ball. A um, bunch of 95, so it's one of the better versions of Stones. Um, Skill-wise, they've given him double touch and soul control. Yay! So you got a a centre back who can do double touches and stuff. Yeah, great. Okay, soul control is nice, I guess, in a centre back, but. Sadly, where it really counts in terms of the skills for Stones, he is lacking. He's always lacking in skills. Weighted pass and low to pass. Okay, they're nice ones to have in a centre-back, but all we've got defensively, interception and sliding tackle. You're going to need man marking, blocker, aerial superiority, and then maybe his acrobatic clearance. Uh, I guess maybe his fighting spirit to finish it off, but I would certainly say to make him a really usable five-star centre-back, man-marking blocker and aero superiority, those three skills are a must. So there are three skills at least that this guy's really lacking. Um, if we shuffle the points around, if I leave him at least at the 90 mark on the important defensive attributes, not just jumping up to 90, let's get his balance up to 70. We've got, oh, yeah, we get to 80 for speed, one point left. And he can either get his passing to 80 or his dribbling to 80. Decisions, I'll go with passing. This is a really nice centre-back card, actually. I'm I'm probably going to get this guy. It's just a shame you need three skills. I've already got a bunch of cards that I need defensive skills on, so I don't know if I'll ever really get all the skills that you really need on this guy. But if you look at the attributes, I would like a bit more in his physical contact, but that's nitpicking because outside of that, jumping up to 90, great. Decent, very decent pace for a centre back. Decent, very decent stamina. Balance at the seventy mark. Not a lot of centre backs get to that mark for balance. Strong defensive attributes, and then obviously on the ball for a centre back, fantastic. So, yeah, very nice. And uh, as you see, he does have other positions. Right back, you can't make him quick enough really to make him a good right back. But defensive midfield, that could be an interesting one. So, would we do much defensively? I mean, uh, sorry, would we do much with the points to make him a defensive mid? We'd need a bit more passing, in my opinion. Um, you don't need quite so much on the physical side. If we go down to four on aerial, I think that's enough for a defensive mid. Uh, passing, start with four. We'll just put one on dribbling. At least get his dribbling up to 80. Seven points left. Um, do, 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 do. do we need to do much? Just stick it on his passing and then one spare for dribbling. Yeah, you can make this guy a fairly neat defensive mid, you know. The stamina's a little bit lacking, actually. In fact, I'm just going to... I'll just take one off passing, actually, and stick on lower body. Yeah, as a defensive mid, he could be, it could be pretty useful defensively. For a defensive midfielder, fantastic. The pace is fine for a defensive mid. Jumping and physical are okay. Some would argue like a little bit more on there, but I think that's okay. Balance 70. Again, for a defensive mid, I don't think you need much more. It would be nice if you had more, though. Stamina 85, I think is borderline for a defensive mid. And down here, tidy enough on the ball. Passing's all right. Not brilliant, but it's all right. Skill-wise, you need one touch pass on him. Um, and then I'd still think about putting some of those defensive skills on him. Uh, Man-marking blocker, aerial superiority. Uh, but one touch pass on a defensive mid is very important. You'd need that skill as well. But certainly, 
if you if you shuffle those training points around you could make him a pretty usable defensive mid but i think certainly as a, as a center back very nice card like i say he's, he's pretty comparable with other versions of john stones um but again just keep in mind if you're not too bothered about how good he is on the ball they've not boosted him that much from his gp card but on the ball they have given him a fair boost though a real boost um so yeah it, it, it it's a an interesting version of john stones i think interesting is the word very nice on the ball for centre back, but you're gonna need some skills. If you're willing to put the skills on him, and if you don't already, don't already have a already have a very good version of John Stones, I think it can be a really, really nice centre back card to pick up. So one left, and that is our goalkeeper, Mark Testegan. So let's jump over to E Football Hub again. We'll have a look at how good he is. So maxed out, we'll go straight to the game plan boost. It's a good version of Testegan. Compared to his GP card, again, it's just a slight boost. It's not a massive boost from his GP card, but it's these attributes here. They, I mean, they obviously decide every every time they do one of these nominated contract packs, they decide they always need to have at least one goalkeeper. And if there's a dribbling theme, much like when they did, uh, it was Chesney, I think, in that Speed Demons one, or Speedsters, whatever they call it, they gave Chesney crazy pace, which was bizarre. But uh, yeah, this time it's Mark Stegen who's really good on the ball. So... It is a bit random, but to be fair, when you pass the ball back to your keeper, it could be pretty nice having that ability on the ball with him. You know, I think we've all been caught out once or twice with the goalkeeper receiving back passes. Um, and but when it comes to the important attributes, though, he is, he is a good version of Testegen. Um, I've got a Champions League Player of the Week one, and that's one of my favourite goal, goalkeepers to use. It's brilliant. I would say it's slightly better than this one, but he's not got as much jumping, and unsurprisingly, he's not as good on the ball. Um, and yeah, I just noticed the skills as well. We have double touch, flip flap, sombrero, and soul control on a goalkeeper. Right. Well, that's good, I guess. It'll certainly be fun in co-op. <laughs> uh, low punt, high punt, long throw, captaincy. Yeah, if you want a fun version of Testegan, happy days. Uh, your dreams have come true. It could be a really fun one to pick up. To be honest, I may well pick this one up myself and just make him make him a good good fun card to use in co-op to be honest it could be it could be a good laughing co-op but uh even outside of that and just having fun with him he is a good keeper you know he'll good a good uh good goalkeeper rounds at 92 reflex is a great 93 parrying and reach both at 90 it's just the catching is not brilliant but he's a good goalkeeper card um it, it's like most of these cards he's, you know he's it's interesting the fact they put the emphasis on dribbling but especially with this one being a goalkeeper so there's not been a version of Testegan like this with the, the attributes they're giving him, certainly with the skills they're giving him. I doubt there ever will be again. So it might be one of those cards where you just want to pick up because it's, it's a rare one. It's a very unique one. Um, but if you look past all the uniqueness about it um, and the, the hilarity of giving him those skills that they have done, to be honest, it is all, it's still a very good goalkeeper card regardless. So uh, yeah, for me, I'm going to pick this card up. Um, and if you need a good goalkeeper, I think, you could do a lot worse than having this one, and you got the bones of the fact that you can do double tap, ball roll, double touches and stuff. So, yeah, it's a good card and it's a fun card. <laughs> so that's all the five stars, and I'm not going to pick any out and give you recommendations because, as I said with previous selections of five star cards from nominating contracts, they're all good cards. It just comes down to what you really like. You know, personally for me, I don't have any interest in picking up Madueka. The lack of end product for me is horrible, but if you like a winger who's really quick and great at dribbling, he might be great for you. Nelson Semedo, you've got to give him some skills defensively. Give him interception, one to other defensive skills as well. If you did give him all those skills, and if you like an attacking fullback, he could be a really fun card to pick up. Vitinha, I think that is a very good card. Uh, it depends on the play style. If he's your type of midfielder, if, he's, if he fits into your formation, your tactics, he could be great. The, on the ball, the passing, brilliant. But uh, obviously, he's not brilliant defensively. He's not physically strong. So it depends if he suits you. But if he does, I think that's a, certainly a very good card. Isco, again, depends if he suits you. He's not quick. If you don't mind that, if you like a great playmaker who's great on the ball, got great passing, could be a really fun card. John Stones, very good on the ball for a centre back, obviously. I'm personally gonna probably going to pick this guy up. He does need a few defensive skills, though, to Stegen. Speaking of skills, what have they done to Stegen? It's. Uh, it's a unique card. I think it's one of those cards where a lot of us are going to pick him up just because he's so unique and there's never going to be another goalie card like him, most likely. Certainly not another to Stegen. So yeah, a goalie with the, the ro ball roll, double touch, whatever you call it. Very unique. And I'll be picking that one up. So they've all got a lot of qualities about them. And outside of that pack, obviously we've got uh, two strikers. You've got 
Ed and Zeko in the Turkish League pack. As I said, I don't rate him as a target man. I don't think he's going to be dominant enough in the air to really to really be effective as a target man. But he does have qualities. It is Ed and Zeko. It's certainly as a version of Ed and Zeko. It is, it is a good one if he suits you as a target man. Um, some people will really like him. It would be very hard to pick him up. Uh, just for me personally, I don't personally like the look of him. And in the Brazilian League pack, I do like the look of Jose Lopez. Uh, again, some people might not. You might not think he looks that great. I think... He looks like a striker who could be really, really effective, uh, especially in the air. So you've got eight five-star cards this, this time around. And I think for some people, all of them could be of value. Um, but hopefully the, the review I've just done and, and taking a look at the way you can train them has given you some help in deciding for yourself which ones you're going to pick up. And now we move on to the match pass. So as always, we start with the mathematics. They haven't changed the, uh, the coin situation in terms of how many coins you get back. Uh, they When they took out the contract renewals, they threw in a, a few sort of uh, coins here and there, 10 coins at a time in, in place of each contract renewal. Um, so now we are getting 230 coins back from the value pass, 340 back from the premium pass. And as always, doesn't know that anything's different with the discounts. So 500 coins to buy the value one, but you get 250 back if it's your first time purchasing the value one. And likewise, premium, 1,000 coins to buy it. But if it's your first time buying the premium, you'll get 500 coins back. So some numbers there for you to, to help you do the maths when you're deciding whether it's worth getting them. But the main factor in deciding, deciding whether it's worth getting them is, of course, the players. We've got Lucas Paqueta for the premium match pass and Kingsley Cohen from the value match pass. Let's take a look at the two players and see if they are any good. So first up, Kingsley Cohen. And there's one very interesting thing to note with this version of Kingsley Cohen. So... Across the board, he has been boosted slightly from his GP card. He's pretty much on a par of previous versions of Coleman. But the one significant thing with this guy, they not just made him better at dribbling. He, they, the dribbling boost is pretty normal for a highlight card. But what they've done, if you look at his GP card, his ball control has been increased by about 7. His tight possession has been increased by about 15. He's had a big boost to his ball control and tight possession. And that, if you look at his previous highlight cards they've been boosted based on the way his GP card is. So compared to other highlight cards, this guy's better on the ball. That's very interesting. So we'll get him fully boosted for the game plan. As you can see, fantastic on the ball, fantastic pace, great balance as well. But he's another one, similar to Madureka, we're lacking a bit with end product. The finishing is okay, to be fair, 78, but the passing is bad. You're going to have to be very careful with this guy's passing. Um, don't ask too much of him with his passing because, yeah, you're going to give the ball away. We, we know how unpredictable, shall we say, the passing is in this game, but... Uh, Certainly, if you like pacey, dribbly wingers, you, you want to do his skill moves and dribble past defenders, this guy could be a lot of fun for you. He's also a super sub. So, I can speak from experience. I've had a, a version of Coleman with super sub skill, and I've used him as a sub second half many times. Really, really effective. Um, in terms of end product, long range curler, long range shooting, dipping shot as well. So, along with that finishing attribute being in the high 70s, he's decent with his shooting. Nothing for passing, though. Heel tricks a nice one few skill moves of course as well but if you get this guy you're going to use him regularly i think one touch pass and through passing would be very important as to put on him um could we shuffle the points around making better passing i think so you can nick a couple from dribbling keep all those at 90 plus um we can nick a couple from dexterity uh we've got one on defending down here thank you very much yoink um you can nick a few from speed keep it 90 speed for me personally, I don't notice a lot of difference in speed once it goes past 90. So that's why I like to take a few away from there quite often. So we've got 18 points there. Nice. Well, first things first. We do need to make the passing better, but I'm going to get his finishing up to 80. And then we've got 14 left for passing. How high do we, how high do we get that? You know what? I'm going to just leave that at 8. One more shooting gets his curl up to 80. So his long range curl is going to be lovely. Then we've got 4 points left. Where do they go? Uh, let's put them back on speed. Because that increases speed, but also his kicking bar. Yeah, I'd probably do that. So he's still not great with passing. You still need to be very careful not to waste too much with his passing. But still great on the ball. Got that finishing pass, the 80 mark, the curl up to 80. So his long range curl should be pretty nice now. Coming off the left flank onto his right foot. Speed and acceleration in the 90s. going to be rapid. Great balance. Yeah, this guy's going to be lovely on the ball. You get get him on the ball out wide and run at defenders. would be fantastic. When you get him to the shooting positions, certainly on the left wing, cutting it onto his right foot with the skills he's got and the finishing attribute, it could be really fun. So, uh, yeah, I, I quite like Lucas card, to be honest. I'm not sure I'm going to be picking up any match passes anytime soon, though, because uh, I just don't really think I'm going to be getting enough value from the nominate contracts. I don't think the nominate contract packs have been 
quite good enough for a while now. Um, having just reviewed them, uh, to be fair, I would say they're slightly better than I thought they were at first glance. There are a few in there I'm going to pick up, but still, I'm not sure match pass is quite so worth it at the moment. I'm not too bothered about getting a few coins back. I certainly don't care about getting any more EXP trainers. They need to start putting better rewards in, like skill trainer, position trainers, and more tokens or whatever. But uh, but yeah, before I digress and ramble too long, this is a good version of common. For him to be so much better with his ball control, and especially his tight possession than other previous versions of him, that makes it very, very interesting to me. So even though I'm not that interested in getting a match pass, I'm still quite tempted with this guy being the, the value one for 500. It's a very interesting looking card. Certainly would put one or two skills on for his passing, but outside of that, you can take chances with his shooting. He's a super sub as well. The pace, the dribbling, yeah. Very interesting. Those two attributes getting the boost they have done makes it a very appealing version of Coleman, and I think it could be a really fun card to pick up. And finally, we have Lucas Pakatar. So, this is a pretty good version of Pakatar. It's the joint highest rated version we've had. Uh, joint with the one in the Premier League Team of the Season pack, whatever it was called. That was a classic number 10. Um, but the big advantage this one has got is obviously it's trainable. You can allocate the points wherever you want. Um, compared to his GB card, it's a good version. So again, like with Coleman... A uh, bit of a boost on ball control and tight possession. Not quite as spectacular as Coleman, but still. Ball control and tight possession been boosted a bit. Finishing's had a nice boost. Acceleration's had a nice boost as well. And uh, apart from that, just a, a slight boost across the board. So over on the whole, this is a good version of Pack Guitar. Um <clears throat> In terms of the skills as well, just one change. They've done away with no-look pass and they've given him double touch. So I think a lot of, a lot of the dribblers will be pleased about that. Uh, already got a few more skill moves there. Uh, heel tricks nice, through passing. Could do with a little bit more end product, to be honest. Uh, one touch pass would be nice. Uh, maybe he's long range shooting, long range curler, but it's a pretty good card. Um, this is before the game plan boost, so we hit the game plan boost here. <clears throat> As you can see, again, you've got a player who's just outstanding on the ball there. He's got decent passing, got decent finishing. Attacking wears beyond 80 is good. He's a creative playmaker. Um, that playing style will be active. Both his wide left positions, attacking midfield, he will not be an active playing style centre midfield. Uh, pretty sure, pretty sure about that. So he'll be playing without an active playing style centre mid, but I don't personally see this guy as a centre mid. He can't, can't defend to save his life. Um, I know some people like playing players like this as a centre midfield just because they've got it as a position, but for me personally, if they can't defend, then they can't be a centre midfield. You've got to have some degree of defensive ability in that position. But like I say, creative playmaker will be an active playing style in the other three positions he's got. Uh, would you play him wide left? I mean, you could give him pinpoint crossing. He's left-footed. If you gave him pinpoint crossing, yeah, maybe. He'd need a bit more speed. Um, if he took a bunch of dribbling away. Yeah, you can make him a very decent left wing, actually. If you gave this guy pinpoint crossing, and we got one point left. Um, hang on. Bit of curl on his crosses there. Ooh, bit more finishing as well, yeah. Yeah, you can make him a decent left wing, actually. Um, but I think most people would see this guy as a playmaker through the middle, though. As an attack midfielder, so uh, with the auto allocation, I think it's fine. You know, you might want a bit more speed. He's, he's not slow though. I don't think you need too much pace as a creative playmaker in that part of the pitch. Um, you don't really need to do anything, but if you did want to shuffle the points around, the obvious place to get points from is dribbling because that's where they put the most on. If you took four off there, still great on the ball, but we've freed up 12 points now. Finishing's already at 80. We'll, we'll stick one more on there for a bit of curl. Um, you could put two on. Passing to get up to 88. You see there, I still don't understand exactly how it works, but you see with that passing be at 86 there, there are some increments where it goes up by two. So you put one extra on passing, goes from 86 to 88. So that's that's quite efficient. We've got four points left still. Stick both those on, on lower body, get a bit more speed on him. There's different ways you could do it. I mean, you could take more dribbling. That one off shooting there and get his acceleration up to 90. That could be pretty nice. You might want to do that. That looks like a decent build. Still one point left. I'll stick that on aerial i guess remember physical contact's important now 72 physical contact there's only one point on there so from level one game the game plan boost takes his physical physical contact past the 70 mark so that's nice good balance uh like i say good acceleration the, pay, the speed's not brilliant but it's, it's certainly decent enough in that role with that play style especially and whatever you do in terms of however you allocate the points he's great on the ball he's got good passing i would put one touch pass on him still i would maybe give him one or two shooting skills as well he does have a good finishing attribute um, that doesn't mean he doesn't need shooting skills. Shooting skills would really help you to kind of make the most of the fact his finishing is decent. So yeah, um, I think you know what you're getting from Pakita. He's very good technically. He's very comfortable on the ball. He's got the skill moves. 
but like I say, this is a good version of him. Um, the Premier League player of the season, one team of the season, whatever that part was called, that was a classic number 10. So that but that made that card quite unique. And it was around the same level as this one. But this one can be trained. You can allocate the points wherever you want. You can put skills on it. You could give him a, another position if you wanted to. You can make him a right midfielder. You can make him an SS or center forward. So yeah, it's a good version of Pakatar. A very good version of Pakatar. Is it worth a thousand coins? As I mentioned, I started rambling when we were looking at Kings of Coman just now. I don't think the players have already been in the nominating contract packs for months now. I've been good enough to really warrant the coins on on the uh, the two match passes. Certainly on the premium one for a thousand coins. So for me personally, I I don't really think it's worth it. But if you do, you know, if you can afford the coins and if you do want a good version of Pakatar, if you like this guy, if you like the look of this card, it is a really good version of him. Um, personally, I would prefer the classic ten version of him if I'd got that because I like that playing style, but. If you'd like a creative playmaker, the fact you can train this guy, you can customize him as you please. It's a, I think it's a pretty fantastic card. It's a very nice looking card. So yeah, it's a good card. Whether or not it's worth a thousand coins, that's entirely up to you. Only you can decide that. But hopefully what I've, what I've told you and what we've looked at here with, with all these players we've looked at um, <clears throat> have helped you to, uh, you know, it's helped you to decide who to use your contracts on and whether or not either of these two match pass players are worth you getting. But uh, yeah, certainly this version of Packets are very nice. So there you go. Like I say, I hope, I hope I've helped you with this video to make your decisions about how to use your contracts and whether to pick up either of the match passes. Really appreciate watching as always. Uh, there will be more videos, as I mentioned at the start, going up over the next few days. There's a bunch more pack reviews to do. Um, as I mentioned, I will be putting a poll up on the community tab. So if you can have a look at that and drop a vote, let me know which video you'd most like to see next. That will help me to decide which one to do next. Um, and there'll be a few more, at least one or two more player face videos as well. I think the Turkish League will be next. So keep your eyes out for that. There will be a bunch more videos coming over the coming days on the channel. Thank you again for watching. I do, do really appreciate it. And I'll be seeing you soon. Take care of yourselves. See you later.